Today I got something very special and uh, I've been looking forward to it. This is my new throne. All right, today I'm gonna to be replacing the toilet. The very first thing we have to do is we have to drain whatever water we can out of it. So on most of toilets, they have a quarter turn valve where you would grab the valve and you would turn it to the right, that would shut it off. But this one, it's a push pull. So I pulled it, now there's not gonna be any water coming out. So now I'm going to flush the toilet. And all the water that comes out of the tank it goes into the bowl. And I'm holding the handle down so that whatever water that comes out is uh, is just going to drop right into the bowl. See, we've got the bowl pretty low. I'm going to stop right there. So the next thing I've got are these packs by Odie. They're called Liquid Lock. And this is going to turn the water, the leftover water, into gel. So I've got one packet here for the bowl. And I just dump it all in there. And I've got another one for the tank. So while that's working, I'm going to uh, start unbolting it. Alright, so over here we got these caps and sometimes they'll just pop off and sometimes you gotta give them a little bit of force. There we go. We got the nut underneath. Okay, now I've got a container. I'm going to put that underneath the water line and I'm going to undo the water line. That was pretty loose. We take a look in the tank. You can see the water in here has gelled up. Some toilets are uh, silicone in, so they put some like a caulk line around the bottom and some of them are grouted. This one is grouted. So I'm going to see if I can break that just by knocking it with my knee. Looks like it's trying to pull up the vinyl tile, so I'm gonna cut that a bit. trash can down so I can just set it right inside. So this one's got the wax ring on the bottom which makes it easier because I don't have a mess on the floor. Just gotta kind of pry it off. I could leave it, doesn't really matter. Just making the toilet sit uneven. Grab this guy up and take that out. Like that. So at this point, the most common thing to do is take a rag and shove it in here. I've got some of these, so I'm going to use this. This is a four inch gripper. This is by Odie. This is a 33403. And this is a three inch gripper. This is also by Odie 33402. I have a three inch drain, so I'm going to be using the three inch, but you might have a four inch. Probably not. Most of them are three inch. I've got this wing nut loose. I'm going to drop it here and tighten it up. I don't want to put a lot of pressure on here because I don't want to expand anything. I just want to seal off any of the gases so they have just a small amount of pressure. But I'm mostly concerned about dropping anything in there and clogging up my sewers. So I don't want that to happen. But now I've got that sealed up, I can go ahead and clean out everything else. You might be thinking to yourself, the toilet I'm putting in might have a smaller footprint and this would be really ugly. So they've got these things. These are vinyl tiles, and you can get these at a lot of the home improvement stores. This is a Chateau 0737993, so if you want your floor to look like mine, you can get this. All you have to do is uh, put it where you want it, cut out what you want, and then it just breaks like drywall. And then you can take this thing, peel it off, and stick it down. So if you don't want to go to the trouble of pulling everything out, you can literally lay this stuff right on top. Now I'm not too worried about that because the toilet I'm going to be putting in is going to be considerably larger than this, so it will completely cover this area. Now I am seeing a few things I don't like. If there was a leak in this toilet, hopefully it would run out to the side. But I am seeing a couple cracks right here, so I'm going to want to seal those up. What I definitely don't want to have happen is for this toilet to leak and then start dripping on the ceiling underneath. 
So this is the closet flange. If there's any damage on that, you want to replace it. It's not that big of a deal. Just take out the screws, put another one on, screw it down. But you do want to replace the closet bolts. It's just because they, they can corrode. You should always put new ones on whenever you put on a new toilet. Alright, so now for the complicated part for my toilet. My toilet is a big bowl, so it comes in like this. And this valve either needs to be directly in the center and about 10 inches up, or 10 inches off to the side. So 10 inches from the side up here. If I leave it right here, the toilet will literally crush it. So I can't let that happen. So I'm going to have to move this valve over here. Okay, since I'm going to be cutting into the wall, the first thing I want to do is turn off the water supply. And the bathroom I'm working on is above this faucet, so if I turn on the water here, it's going to drain out the line, and that way I don't have to worry about there being any pressure upstairs. Alright, so I'm going to start out just by cutting around the area, and I'll see what is actually behind this wall. Looks like they used a pretty simple nail on stub out right here so so the pecs came down and then they screwed that into the stud right here and then it stubbed out right there first thing i have to do is i have to get this off now supposedly with these uh all you have to do is pull and spin to the left before i do that i'm going to make sure there isn't any water in this line which it probably is going to be a little bit all right so i've got it under the valve i'm going to open this up there you go. So there's a little water in there. Now I'm going to pull and twist and see what happens. Okay. All right. So that came right off. At this point, it's a good idea to have one of these. This is just a cap that you can push on. So if in an emergency you had to turn the water on to the house, you can just take this, shove it onto that PEX, and you'll be able to turn the water back on. Then they also make a tool that you can put on the back, and you can pop it back off. So these are reusable, but you don't want to use them too many times. They do make these for the uh, angle stops and for lots of different things. I'm going to be using a crimp on angle stop because I, I prefer not having the push to connect style for, for anything that's going to be permanent. But for emergencies, it's good to have one of these on hand. All right, this is called a flow tight connection, and I don't even think they make these things anymore, but because I broke it, I'm definitely not going to be reusing it. Cut this ring and pop that off. And I can pull off the cover. What I'm going to be looking at doing is I'm going to be using one of these. Hold Tight is the brand that makes these things, and this is a 103187. So the idea here is I'm going to find two studs, and I'm going to screw down that and then i can move this connection anywhere i want to now according to the manual for the toilet i need it to be 10 inches from the center and about five and a half inches up so five and a half five and a half is down here about so this one's a little high but i think i might just go with that height and then 10 inches is right about there so I can be a little bit further away, but I definitely don't want to be any closer. About here somewhere. So I think that's 10 inches off center. That's a little further. About a quarter, but that's fine. And then five and a half up is down here. But I think I'm going to go with that same area. So I want the stub out to be approximately where that mark is. It doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be close. What I believe is happening is that this line is coming out, coming down, and then coming out. So uh, if that's what's happening, great, because that means I'm going to be able to pull this back and I won't have to make a connection onto here and add picks to it. And that, if I have to do that, that's fine, but the more connections you have, the more potential points of failure. So I'm going to try to just uh, 
bend this and get this thing ready. So the first thing I want to do is give myself a little bit more room to work with. Okay, the next stud over, it's basically right here. Yeah, it's almost right behind this guy. Okay, so I, I decided I'm gonna try to hit this stud. So I'm gonna bring this over and continue cutting it there. bit of material that I can screw in right here. But now it's easier to see what I've actually got. So I've got this outlet that goes to the wall in the bedroom and I've got uh, this PEX. <laughs> Why did they nail it in like that? Uh, okay, so the PEX line's going up, coming across and coming down and then going through the floor underneath. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna bend it that way so that I can screw it to the wall right to this stud and then I'll have it come across and I'll screw it right here. So I need one of these holes to line up at 10 inches. So I need probably this one to go right here. So I need to bend about, looks like two and a half, about two inches. All right, so I'm gonna go with two and a quarter, which is uh, this guy right here. Only for a little bit deeper than that. Okay, now since I have an outlet here, I want an outlet right here. That way if I ever put a bidet in or if I need to plug something in by the sink, I'll have access to it. And it needs to be a GFCI, that's a ground fault circuit interrupt. In other words, if it gets wet, it's gonna trip and it won't electrocute you. So it has to be GFCI. It's gonna be right about here. Stud is right there. It doesn't feel like there's anything else. So this is a one gang box saw attachment by Cubit. Just like that. And you can see what we got. It's just gonna cut out a perfect little box. Some good news there is nothing right here on this stud and we are right next to it so i can throw this box in just like that all right this is romex by southwire this is simple and this is 12-2 this is 14-2 if you're using a 20 amp breaker you want to use 12-2 if you're using a 15 amp breaker you want to use 14-2 and so the way you check that just go out to the breaker box and if the little switch on there says 20 use this if it says 15 use this and the main reason that that's important is because this is a slightly smaller gauge and if you try to use this on a 20 amp breaker this will actually heat up before the breaker pops so it's very important to use this with a 20 amp breaker just gonna run that down there you go pull it out right there so it's kind of hard to see but there's a screw here and a screw right here right and those are going to go right into the stud so i'm going to drop it in and then screw those in but i also need to break open the hole right here so that i can fit the romex in there you go and i can slide this in here run 
have plenty of extra. So I'm just going to hold the box where I want it, and I'm going to screw those screws in. Okay, so you want this to be out about six inches. So the way you measure that is you put your hand against the wall, pull your thumb out, and that's where you cut it. Before I do that, I'm going to try to stuff it inside this box. So this is the other side. This is where the outlet actually is. So I got the breaker shut off. And make sure that we do not have any voltage. Okay, so I'm happy with that. some room in here so that if I ever have to uh, pull some more out I'll have a little bit of extra and then I just have to nail this wire down oh, yeah. it's perfect amount. okay cool and these are cable staples so by code the, the uh, Romex has to be attached to the wall so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the Romex put it between here then hammer that right into the stud so ideally you want to have this further away from the wall in case somebody throws a screw in and might damage this Romex. Uh, but just keep that in mind. So this is about where I could put it. Uh, but ideally you want to put it closer to the center of the of the stud. Enough about that much. And when you're stripping this uh, jacket, you want to cut right down the center. That way you're only going to be cutting the copper and the ground. See our other conductors are in perfect condition still. And so I'm going to be installing an outlet. It has to be a GFCI. So this is a 20 amp tamper resistant GFCI. And what that means is that if you splash water on it, it will trip this and then you won't get electrocuted. You can see we've got the line and the load. The wires we're plugging in are going to be the line and that's going to supply power to it. If we also want to put other outlets on the circuit so they also trip by this GFCI, you would put it on the load side. So line, load, and I'm going to strip about an inch. So the gold gets the black, the silver gets the white, and then the ground is green. And you want to put that in so that the, uh, so the screw grabs it clockwise. Nice and tight, and have good connection to the ground. And the black. Now I'm going to just kind of bend it down, and then up, and do that over and over. ground on the bottom. See this up. Tie this one. So the grounds are good. tight everywhere. Now I'm just going to try to bend it similar to how they had it and 
shove it back in the box. And I can put this guy back on. All right, so we got power as soon as we turn this breaker back on. So this is a GFCI receptacle tester, and this is a super fancy one. You don't need anything quite this fancy. So I'm going to reset it. There we go. We've got the green light saying that there should be power. All right, we're good there. And we're good there. And what makes this one kind of cool is it actually reads what the voltage is. So I'm getting 122 volts AC. Now I'm going to test it. Popped it. All good. And it actually said this that one, that was cool. I didn't know it did that. So it actually said that it was a 0.7 second trip. So it took 0.7 seconds for this thing to pop. That one was oh 0.06 seconds. So a very short period of time. So that's kind of cool. This is uh that'll tell you a lot more information than you ever need, but kind of cool that it does it. This is drywall. You can see I got the brown on this side and I got the blue on this side. You have to get this type of drywall if you're going to be working in a bathroom because this is somewhat waterproof and it's got like a tar built into it and you want to make sure this side is facing out. I want to do this before I get the stub out so that I get it proper uh, sizing. So I'm going to cut this a little bit big. This is my template. I'm going to be using these uh, hold right PEX turnouts. These are for a half inch. This is 10 inches right here. There we go. Now I can kind of slide it around however I need it. And I'm looking at about four inches, just a little past it. using these uh, fast and tight drywall screws. I do want this to be flush with uh, this stud. So we are moved. This is seven and three eighths. From the side, seven and three eighths. So that's about nine. So yeah. right there is right where I should be drilling for this. That should be plenty of room. So I'm going to use a seven eighths bit. There we go. That should fit like so. Now I'm just going to try to clean some of this up so we get a nice flat surface. And I'm using Easy Fill Light Repair Putty. So I'm going to 
in some of this. Close the bag up. Be able to save the rest of this for later. And add water. And this stuff will set in 20 minutes. I'll just get a mix. definitely be doing touch-up work on this. Well, while that's working, we can put this back on. So, this is a PEX crimper with PEX rings, and this is a new angle valve. So it's a quarter turn. There we go. Right now it's open, and that's closed. I accidentally got the wrong type. I got one that plugs in and then it comes out the other side. Now that's okay except that it doesn't give me a lot of room because I'm going to have to attach the, the line here and then bend it way back to go to the toilet. I want it to come out the side. So this is Dynaflex 230. This is the clear stuff. I'm going to try to somewhat seal up around the floor here. So I'm just going to try to cut this tube so that it's a little straighter. And I'm going to stick on this ring. get that centered so when I push this on these uh, these two little ribs will be crimped against the pegs so that looks pretty good right there and the important part here is when you crimp it you want to make sure you're crimping it perfectly perpendicular you don't want to be crimping it at a slight angle So I got a go no gauge and I'm looking for half inch. It fits on but it doesn't go all the way to the end. Right? If that sunk all the way to the end, you'd be in trouble. So that's a perfect crimp. So this is closed, this is open. I'm gonna close it and I'm gonna go turn the water on. Okay, the water should be on. Water's on, and I got no leaks coming out of here. So that's good. I got a little sleep and I'm I came back. This thing's all siliconed. And I'm going to start finishing this.
if you want to know how to clean these putty knives just dump them in water and uh, all that putty will come right off this is definitely gonna be hidden by the toilet oh this looks pretty good This is just uh, painter's tape or gaffer's tape. It's good because you can peel it right back off and it won't cause any damage. And this is Orange Peel Wall Texture by Homax. So there's a dial back here where you can adjust the uh, strength and then you just press the trigger. Now, I did notice that if you press it a little bit, you get a much different texture than if you just crush it. So I'm gonna try to just crush it. All right, so I'm gonna let that sit. I don't wanna put on too much at once because if you do, it'll start running down because it'll, it'll all collect together and it will give you a very ugly texture. So I'm gonna let that sit. I'll come back and I'll hit it again. All right, so we are starting to get some texture. Some of the big bubbles kind of died down a little bit. Yeah, it's starting to look pretty good. So it's going to be pretty low, pretty out of the way, but I do want it to look good. I think this is going to be my last coat. Yeah, I won't be going any further than that. So next up is going to be paint. So I took a piece of the drywall with the paint on it over to Lowe's and I got this bucket of paint matched, hopefully matched. And it looks like it's still fairly well mixed. I waited an hour, but it looks like it's still a little wet, so I'm gonna leave that for a little while longer. But while that's happening, I can replace this valve, so I'm gonna do that. And they do make tools for cutting this. It looks like this. But the problem is this won't fit in there long enough to get to the back, so that's not gonna work. The only way to really get this guy off is to cut it. But I'm gonna to try to cut it as close to the thing as I possibly can, just to preserve as much of the pecs as I can. It's actually a good thing that uh, I have to put a new one on anyway because I, I gotta put the scutcheon on. And this is the one I should have got. The inlet's here and the outlet is out here. I'm just gonna do it the same way, put on the compression ring. And I'm gonna do a quick measurement to make sure that after it's pressed all the way in, I'm gonna hit two barbs. Looks good. Press it in. Make sure we're crimping the whole thing and that we are parallel. Check with the go no go. Yep, we are good. So I'm gonna close that and then I'm gonna have my girlfriend turn the water on. Okay, go ahead and open up the, the bottom one all the way. Okay. Okay, and that's it. Thank you. Okay. All right, bye. Love you. Yep. So we got water, and we got no leaks. And then for the old fitting, this is where I can use these uh, compression ring removers. So I just fit it over the end. I'm going to squeeze, and that blade is going to cut into the, uh, the compression ring. All right, got on one side. And I got it on the other. And you can see as I bit that one, it just kind of falls apart. There we go. 
I just make sure that I didn't cut into this fig, and I did not, so I can reuse this. So the tool that I'm putting in comes with these bolts. And I just want to make sure that we are parallel. That looks pretty good. So I want it to be flush. I think that's good. And I'm going to be using this. This is a better than wax seal, so it's rubber. I got the old uh, Johnny rings, which are good. They're tried and true, but these things make no mess. So I'm going to be using that. And it comes just like this with a little bit of foam. And if your closet flange is deep, then you could throw this thing on too. And you could have a nice thick flange. Or if you just want extra compression. It actually comes with the uh, closet bolts too, but I'm not going to be using these. thing about the uh, the waxless seal is that if it was a wax seal and I tried to move it around like that it would break up all the wax so waxless allows you to reposition it which probably saves me right there and this rod that I was playing around with before that's actually the tool that I'm going to use to put the, the uh, nuts on so I'm going to drop that down I'm going to put one of these plastic nuts on the end and that's going to be what locks this toilet down right, so I'm dropping it down I don't want to tighten it down yet, not until I get both of them on. So I'm going to tighten it up a little over here and a little over here. I'm going to go back and forth just so that it's snug. I don't want the uh, I don't want the toilet to wobble. I also don't want to crack the porcelain. All right, that feels pretty good. Now for the water supply. This part might be a little tricky. I got the 20 inch one, which is the longest that they have, but it might still not be long enough. I'm gonna see what I can get. <laughs> Finger tight. I'm gonna give it another quarter turn. And I'm just looking for leaks. there. There's no leaks in the back. Nothing coming out the side and I don't see any water starting to collect inside anywhere. For the very first flush. The last step is grout. Now you can see there's a bit right here where the last toilet was actually just a little bit longer. And I want to make sure that we're supported on the front, so I'm going to be using this. This is just a, uh, a synthetic wedge, so I'm going to shove it under here. Uh, did it backwards. Yeah, it should snap like that. No, that's not doing it for me on here. Pre-snap it. There we go. This one works any better. 
There you go. And that should be enough, but I'm going to see if I can force one in down here. And I also don't want to put too much pressure on here because, again, we can crack that porcelain. There we go. So I got a little support for the bowl. And now I just got to grout. You can use silicon, just like that Dynaflex 230, that works great. Or you can use grout. I prefer grout. So this is a float. This is by Trox. This is a grout I'm using. This is designed for the vinyl floor. So it's, uh, it's not necessarily designed for the toilet. It's designed to go in between the cracks on the vinyl floors. But I'm going to be using this. And that way, if I ever do redo this, it'll all match. And this is a bucket with a sponge and water. And you want this to all be clean. What I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to take my float and scoop some out on the tip. And I'm going to press it in and then wipe it across. Press it in and wipe it across. I'm going to keep on doing that. And it's okay if it's a little messy because that's what the sponge is for. And the idea is I want to get it mashed underneath the toilet. That way if somebody comes out of the bathtub and they're all soaked, it's not going to go underneath the floor. And I can smooth it out with the sponge. Just make sure that the sponge is nice and wet. And it all comes off. And uh, then just re-dip this in the bucket, keep cleaning it off, and keep on going. And everything will come off. Just like that. And so you can see we got a pretty nice line there. Now I'm going to come around to the front. I'm going to try to fill this. I might just mash that in with my finger. It's looking okay. Got a little break here, but I don't want to work this spot too much, so I'm just going to keep on going. Let this dry, and I'll come back and touch this up. been 24 hours and I'm going to put on the last touch up. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Covered up the mess. I mean, you can still tell that there's a little bit much there, but it looks a lot better than a hole, so not too bad. So I'm going to give it 24 more hours and then we'll be done. So this tub, I don't want to dump that down the drain because it's got grout in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that outside, set it in the sun, let it evaporate, and then throw it in the trash. And that's it. That's the whole thing.